Hello and a very, very warm welcome from all of us at My Umbrella to Under the Brody Live. We are back after a brief period of respite, recuperation and recovery. And we are here with a tiny little soft launch that has been um, briefly broadcast across a few platforms just to see who's interested in listening to us. So again, uh, welcome to Under the Broly Live. This is the My Umbrella podcast, which aims to educate and inform the wonderful masses about the wider community with regards to the lesser LGBT plus sexualities, genders, identities, kinks and fetishes. My Umbrella, of course, is a volunteer-led project by Reading Pride, based in Reading, Berkshire, for the lesser-known LGBT plus identities. And we will launch Bright Reading Pride in 2015. And our aim is to educate, support and socialise. And we also aim to signpost those who require the support and advice from other organisations to the relevant services. Of course, at the same time, with everything that's still going on with that blasted C word, COVID-19, in these unprecedented times, we at My Umbrella feel that it is more than important even now um, to stay connected and entertained, to maintain a healthy mind and to stay positive. And sadly, with nearly all Pride events in 2020, not only looking like they've been cancelled or postponed, but most of them have all been moved online. We know that many of you will feel that a major part of your social life will be affected this summer, and we certainly have felt the same as well. So while we may not be able to run a lot of our workshops and attend our stalls like normal, we have decided that we're going to give you the next best thing, which is our hardworking volunteers live streaming our very, well, I was going to say our very first, I don't know where that's come from. Uh, this is episode 11. Episode 11! Our 11th episode of Under the Body live and my goodness me we feel it um so discuss lgbt plus identities and issues uh, we're going to share our experiences and of course we're going to interact with all of you lovely lovely people now we have said that we're going to interact with you and there are a number of wonderful and exciting ways that you can interact with us now if i've got this right pointing above my head right there should be our wonderful website www.myumbrella.org.uk you've also <laughs> got above kerry's head You've got our email address, which is info, that's I-N-F-O, at myumbrella.org.uk. And then in our wonderful guests window, just above Thumper's window, pointing at our Twitter handle, which is at myumbrella.uk. And if you would like to join us on Twitter, by all means, please do start your tweet with hashtag under the brolly. And we'll be more than happy to read out any emails or messages from you during the show. Also, live, because this is live, scary stuff, we have also got a live chat room, which is within Face Space YouTube thing. Is it Face Space YouTube thing? It is on both of those things. It's on both of those things. So I believe that we've got the wonderful Christina keeping an eye on YouTube for us. And we have the lovely Tom, my significant other, and also, I'd like to say, my partner. Um, more than that. More um, of course, keep an eye on our Facebook page as well for the comments and wonderful, wonderful messages on our live stream as well. Anyway, enough of me rabbiting on and generally just trying to pad out and fill as much time as possible. Let's introduce you to the team so you can find out what we're all about. So if I could have a wave from the beautiful Christina, one of our founding members of My Umbrella there. Thank you very much, Chrissy. How are you doing today? All good, all good. All good, lovely. Could we have a wave from the beautiful Kerry, one of our other founding uh, individuals from My Umbrella? There she is. And is that pizza? That is totally pizza right now. Amazing. I love this. I love it. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to wait until you take the next bite and I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, we've also got <laughs> my, myself and Tom um, here based in the beautiful sunny, sunny town of Western Supermare. And also, please allow me to introduce... Um, Mikey into the background. He's not going to say anything because he's currently making everything work because that's just what he does. So Mikey is keeping everything ticking over. And last, but certainly no means least, I'd like to introduce our wonderful guest uh, who is called Thumper, who is in our very, very fourth window there. Thumper, would you be kind enough to give an introduction to the lovely people out there in the wonderful world of YouTube and Facebook about who you are and what you've done? Okay, so I'm uh, Thumper. So... Um not my actual um, name of birth. Um, uh, it's, we have things called C names and I've started to adopt um, this name called Thumper. Um, I am actually uh, non-binary. I use the pronouns uh, they, them, which can be a bit weird. I do uh, generally present masculine 
but I am actually non-binary. Um, I were I have created a group which originally started in Reading, but it's now started to expand, uh, which looks at kink and fetish um, and tried to organise groups and look about what kink and fetish does historically and also what it should do now and working with prides on making uh, kink inclusive kink and fetish inclusive areas uh, currently working with uh, pride in Gloucestershire and did a whole um, lot of uh, streams this week with uh, them uh, under my company which is called Animagy uh, we did one on kink and fetish on Thursday which actually Steve um, was on the panel for as well so which was quite exciting. Oh yes, very much so. Very much. Either. R- riding by the seat of our pants, I think, is probably the best word for me. Because <laughs> you just finished working, King, screaming into the office, we get it sorted. Can I, can so, I, just, yes. can I just point out? I yes. just noticed. I don't know Go if on. anyone can see this. We've got a little rough schedule of what we do. We've got one page there. We've got another page there. And then we've got two pages. Two lines on yep. one page at the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, actually think, I, I actually, uh, I actually don't think that anybody out there watching would even believe for a second that we've got a script or a schedule with, with I, previous episodes. Say, so, I mean, we get fairly close to it. I it's actually a menu for a restaurant we're going to later. It, it, oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> I actually, I do like look at uh, at least the fourth line down. Uh, what, um, pile of pets. Uh, no, yeah, that do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you so much, Thumper, for um, giving us a, a breakdown of um, the reason why you're here today, um, and also basically why, why we've introduced you and why we brought you onto uh, the wonderful podcast. Now, over to Tom with a quick chat room update for some Ooh. individuals because it would be nice to see what's going on. Anyone from the chat room for you, Chrissy? There is currently me plus one other viewer on YouTube, but currently nothing has been said. Ooh. Oh, there we go. I think what we've got we have got, we've got a Charlotte in the chat room. Hello, Hi, Charlotte. Charlotte. Lovely to, lovely to see, see you there. Um, and we've also got, well, we've hit the heady. Oh, we just got up to 10. We just got up to 10. Oh, um, we had 12. Um, so hi to the 12 people who are watching now and also Absolutely. to all the people who are watching us in the future. Yes. You can't let us know, but obviously we, we do appreciate you joining us. Mm-hmm. But obviously, you can't always be here at the same time we're broadcasting. So. And of course, if you are watching this in the future and the time has already passed for you to be able to interact live with us, there is nothing whatsoever stopping you from dropping us an email for any questions that you've got that you would like to put to us, to the team, or you'd like us to put through to Thumper or for the attention of uh, Anamaji or Pilot Pets. So, without further ado, as I'm sure you're all aware from what we've alluded to, uh, today's episode focus is around kink fetish and sexual health. So, without further ado, I'm going to um, jump straight in and not put Thumper on the spot, but what I'd like to do is at least give Thumper the opportunity to tell us about what Annie Magie and Parlour Pets do with regards to the LGBT plus community. Okay, um, so I uh, run a company i founded the company and chairperson of the uh, company uh, which is animagy so animagy is a community interest company based in reading um, our activities provide benefit for the lgbtq plus communities mainly in the south east of england but also where feasible um, in the uk we foster an inclusive kink positive generally 18 plus community both in person, in person in Reading, and also working online due to uh, recent circumstances. Our primary activities are hosting in person and online educational networking events for the LGBTQ plus community, and provide spaces to promote the work others do in the community. Um, we do a bit more, but that's generally the the overview that we have made uh, for the company. Um, and apart, and we'll talk. I was talking about the. Um, in-person event and the in-person event that we run is pile of pets so it is an 18 plus event um, just to ensure consent issues and everything else we always keep it 18 plus no deviations uh, and we run that based in reading at the uh, face bar we have a massive venue uh, which can hold loads and loads of people um, unfortunately we only did one event in march and then we had oh. obviously covid come along and made it all good for us. But um, we're definitely looking at continuing that once we can do. And we're also looking at doing more things, 
maybe in other places or different things in Reddin. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, and Animage also does work with Pride at the moment, uh, building inclusive places for Pride. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Now, I know that there may be some people out there that as soon as they hear the terms kink and fetish, they suddenly get very, very nervous, very, very uncomfortable. Um, I certainly know that when I was first introduced to the scene, as it were, um, a lot of people have uh, different ideas and different interpretations of what a kink is, what a fetish is. And I know that there's also people out there that maybe um, require a little bit more additional education to kind of help them understand what it is, how it works, um, and also essentially a little bit more about how it fits into the community. So the, the reason why we put, um, put essentially put this particular podcast on today and the reason why we've included Thumper with regards to the expertise and what Thumper does with regards to Animeji, uh, anime mm -hmm. uh, see, I've got it right that time, uh, and Pile of Pets. Um, do you know, you have no idea how much I've had to write it down to make sure I pronounce it properly, um, is because we are a kink inclusive um organization and we want to demonstrate that the education and support that is required behind understanding what kink and fetish is is very very important um, and on that basis would you be kind enough Thumper, for those individuals who are not familiar with the terms kink and fetish or who have maybe uh, an understanding of kink and fetish that isn't necessarily as accurate as i certainly think we all feel uh, could you provide us with like a summary definition of what these terms mean, just so we've got a, an understanding? Yeah, so I, I, yeah, um, we do have, people have different definitions, and I think sometimes we do also, people use kink and fetish interchangeably. So like you said, we always say kink and fetish. So we never say kink fetish or kink slash fetish. We all say kink fetish, and there's a reason behind that. So we always say, I always think in my head is that kink is an act so it's something that some requires to get gratification mm -hmm. uh, while fetish is more um is not really needed so it's normally a thing object so it can be like a hand or a foot um, a leather a neoprene latex all of those sort of things objects or parts of the body mm -hmm. like paraphilias would come more under the fetish bracket so Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had this as we had this example on Thursday um, that I really uh, was quite good. So uh, let's say someone has a fetish for feet. They have a fetish for feet, but the act of sniffing feet or whatever like that is obviously mm -hmm. your kink. Your kink is sniffing feet. Your fetish is liking feet. So it's it's understanding those um, subtle but important. Um, uh, differences. I think um, I think that's a really really good explanation of it and um, just on the basis that because of what we're talking about today uh, I believe that a disclaimer has gone out on the actual um, podcast itself that this is a 16 plus uh, podcast. Um, we will not be referencing any particular um, kink or fetish activity but we will at least be providing um, very generic examples um, that can be related to but if you want to find out more uh, then I know at the end of the podcast um, Thumper is going to be providing some additional information as far as where resources are and where you can essentially point yourself to. Um, we do feel that it's really important that we talk about this but in a way that is um, sensitive and appropriate to the audience that we are looking at extending to. Um, and at the same time, it's important to understand that this is very much inclusive of the LGBTQ plus community. So thank you for going into that detail, Fumper. And I know that um, we, we are, um, and, and I would be lying if uh, I didn't say this, that we, we've wanted to deliver this for a while and we are comfortable delivering this. But at the same time, we also want people to understand that uh, it's important that there is an education element of this so that people are aware that this exists within the community. to the topic we talk about this. Moving on, it's important that there is a historical link between kink and fetish and sexual health. Is that right? Um, yeah, so there's um, a lot of history with kink and fetish. Uh, we'll, 
uh, quickly, I was talking to someone, uh, actually my partner, uh, this uh, this weekend. Just as I just came back from working at Pride and Gloucestershire all, all week, um, very tired. Um, but we'll talk, um, he was saying that one of his friends watched um, was look is was trying to talk to his friend about what King Fetish is, and he his friend thought there was only been about ten years or twenty years that people have been interested in King Fetish, but actually that's totally wrong um the leather scene goes back to about the 1950s uh, there's been uh, recorded history with king fetish during victorian times when first like cotton and some of exotic fabrics came in people were fetishizing them but yeah there's also been a link to um se- sexual health and king fetish uh mainly during uh the 80s um with the leather scene like I said, it originated around about the 50s um, from uh, uniforms from World War II and also the biker scene. Um, they, in the 80s, we obviously had the big HIV and AIDS crisis, which devastated the LGBTQ plus community. The King and Fetish community was one of the communities, and also I will mention the drag community because they did a lot as well, but the leather community leather men, leather dykes, leather queers, did a lot for the HIV crisis. They did a lot of fundraising, especially in America, where obviously it's private um, healthcare. So they had to pay for their healthcare. Uh, They did a lot of fundraising to try and get those people to the right medical people. They did a lot of promotion and a lot of education, well, education, awareness probably is probably a better word, awareness of HIV and AIDS in the mm-hmm. community as they were probably one of the first to be hit out of the whole LGBTQ plus community um, and that's probably the main basis of um, the history with uh, King Fetish and such wealth. It's still in the Mr Lever UK um, uh, overview so what they have to do as Mr Lever UK to prevent um, male uh, violence, so sexual violence, and also to promote good sexual health. And it's still apparent today with the the most delivered uh, title. That okay? Is that a good enough answer? I th- I just can't hear anything else. I don't know if we've lost connection. I'm just gonna see if we're gonna be able to come back. Well I can hear you now. Yep, we can hear everyone now. Don't know what happened there. Did we lose my nice explanation? <laughs> I heard most of it. I think we lost the last sentence. Oh that's fine. You're still with us, Steve. Uh, I think um, I don't know if you can hear us at all, um, Bumper. We may, we may have lost connection. We're just going to see if we can come back um, a second. I believe we've lost Steve. Bear with us all the moment, folks. Minor technical difficulties. Okay, we should be coming back now. Can you see us? Can you hear us? We can see you and we can hear you. Lovely, <laughs> brilliant. Uh, apologies about that, everybody. Um, we are we are relying as as much as possible on the wonderful internet, and occasionally we do drop out. Um, Thank you very much, Thumpy. You, you provided a fantastic answer. We, we we did hear it all, so thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and certainly, I think it will surprise a lot of individuals with regards to um, the actual history, as far as the historical link between kink and fetish and how that interlinks with sexual health. And I think it is important for people to understand within the LGBTQ plus community where the link sits. Uh, from your own experience of attending Pride events, 
uh, and certainly relating back as far as um, kink fetish and the LGBTQ plus history. How visible or included do you think kink and fetish are at these Pride events that you've attended previously? You don't have to name any particular Pride event, certainly not to highlight or single them out, but do you think kink and fetish is actually fairly visible and well represented at Pride events? So I, so I think uh, kink fetish is definitely needed at Pride events and I think sometimes it does lack in certain Prides. Uh, we definitely see a, a large proportion of a inclusion of kink and fetish being uh, from the pup community. Uh, we generally see a lot of pups and go to these events and also having areas. Now, that's great to see that Pride's started to be inclusive, but if you have a look at the history um, of kink and fetish and kink and fetish pride, you see that pups didn't originate to probably about the 80s, 90s. Um, so you've got the leather scene that was there from, from Stonewall, which aren't being included as much as pups for some reason. I think some of the um, ideas might be that leather men look scary. We can't really include them. They look quite dominating. They juxtapose from this colours and bright rainbows, but leather men and other kink and vegetables have been there since the pretty much start pride. We, I'm going to go back to the call we had on Thursday because it's an amazing call, definitely watch. Um, we had someone say about the story about uh, Stonewall, where two people were locked in the back of the van, handcuffed together, and they were let out of the van and they were running around um, Round Stonewall, and they appeared next to, in front of some leather men, um, and they asked, "Do you have a key?" And obviously, being leather men and uh, liking all of the police outfits, police looks, and they obviously had police handcuffs, they had a key for it, and they let these two people out, um, these two uh, LGBTQ plus activists at Stonewall. Um, so it shows you that there is a history um, there, and that that. Leather men have been there since the start. They've been the protecting force, they're like the the barrier at Pride, the protection. But for some reason, that started to get a bit lost in the last recent years. Um, why and how is a bit a bit worrying there sometimes. Is, I feel. Uh, there I do apologise, Evan. We're having some real difficulties at the moment connecting. Please do bear with us a second. Just trying to see if we can fix any issues that we have at the moment. Chris, are you OK at your end? Yep. OK. I can uh, John Per, can guys. you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Brilliant. We can hear you. Thank you. OK. Excellent. Me too. Um, you have to report. I have to apologise. Thanks, Kerry. Um, I, I'm not quite sure how far you actually got as far as explaining about um, your experience of attending Pride events and um, visibility and inclusion with kink and fetish. Um, so apologies if we may have missed something again. Would you mind just going back over again what you were what you were saying? Yeah, I'll just do a brief overview of what I was saying. I was just saying that we see a lot of inclusion of the pub community, which is amazing. But I think we lack the inclusion of other areas of kink and fetish. And probably areas which have more history with pride, such as leather men, and also some of the rubber scene as well, um, because pups didn't originate to quite later in the King Confederate scene, about the 90, uh, early 90s, late 80s. Um, so we, I think the inclusion is getting there because we're seeing pups um, back at pride because we, I think we lost a bit of time where there wasn't sort of like dipped for some reason. There was leather men and there is leather men at big prides. Uh, 
and everything, but at the smaller pies, there's not really as many Leatherman, but there is a large pup community. So I think we just need a balance and allow everyone and everyone from the King of Vetch community to attend and be included, not being shunned for being in full leather or being in a rubber suit when, in, when appropriate, leather chaps. Not appropriate, but if you're in full leather, in leather jeans, everything's covered, it should be appropriate. There's no, there's no problem with that. I think that leads quite nicely, actually, on to, and the reason why I think there are a few people that are a little bit, um, not necessarily nervous as such, but I think I think it's probably down to the the understanding and maybe the the, the education of it. And I think you've alluded to it quite nicely with regards to talking about appropriate appropriateness at Pride. Um, but do you think that there is an issue including kink and fetish within Pride events? And if so, where do you think the issues tend to lie? So I think it lies on both sides of the coin. I think uh, prides are too, sometimes too scared or too worried that uh, about talking about kink and fetish and talking about it in dress codes and talk and reaching out to the kink and fetish community saying, oh, what do you want to wear? What's this wear? What, what's appropriate? Because if I'm going to a pride event and all it says is, and there's no dress code or it's just like swimwear coverage what what does what does that mean for me as a kingster and it also changes like you can see someone in leather shorts and get told no but then someone's in some speedos on roller skates going down the high street and they're fine and i'm like there's no there's no um there's no reproducibility of the dress code uh, but i thought that it also lies on the other side of the coin of the King of Fetish community realizing that it, there is there is families there, there are going to be children there that uh, because we want people who are people who are of a younger age to be educated so then we get a better inclusive uh, community as we progress. Everyone's included in Pride, everyone should be should be able to go to Pride. So I think people who King of Fetish need to realise a little bit about what sort of environment they're going into, public decency. But mm -hmm. I, I've rarely, rarely, rarely seen any kinkster or anyone who's into fetish wear something that's not, uh, that goes against public decency. I think people are just a little bit too apprehensive and just, we need these conversations like we're having today going, well, the reason I wear leather, or which I do, the reason I wear leather is a confidence thing. When I wear leather, I feel so much more confident about going into uh, the world and going to these pride events, which are huge and can cause anxiety. So you want people to be as confident as possible to go to these prides. Um, we've got pups. There's a lot of pups who are neurodiverse and have struggled with going to large crowds and places with a uh, large amount of noise. And Pupping out and having the pup hood on helps them so much and helps them actually attend Pride. So if you're saying, oh, we don't want pups there, you're pretty much saying to a proportion of people, we don't want you there because mm -hmm. they would be able to attend Pride if they weren't a pup. Um, so mm -hmm. it, we've got to try and allow people to understand why people wear what they want to wear, why are they part of this community. It's a confidence thing, it's a security thing, it's something that they enjoy doing. And really, we all enjoy doing stuff in our own time, we all enjoy doing stuff on the street, we all enjoy wearing different stuff. I'm wearing mm -hmm. a shirt, some people like, like to wear dresses. We've got to understand our large, diverse community. I think I think you've really touched on something really important there, which um, and it's it's really nice actually that um, it is very much almost like a fifty fifty balance, and it's basically about making kink family friendly, but at the same time ensuring that everybody is included within Pride because that's exactly what a Pride event is about. It's a bit inclusivity of everybody and essentially embracing everyone's diversity and everyone's differences, but also at the same time there has to be. Uh, a, a mutual understanding and respect for everybody because if we want everybody to get on and to coexist and to be included then there needs to be uh, a mutual understanding of acceptance of what, what 
acceptable and what is, as you've already said, appropriate for the moment. Um, and I think you, you've covered that really, really well. Um, I think it does lead on quite nicely to, from your own opinion, and certainly um, I think it's worth throwing this out because I'm sure we've got a lot of uh, comments in the chat room, I believe. I've got one long one. Excellent. OK, so what we'll do is I'm going to just go over to the chat room a second, if I may, fine, uh, yeah. and we'll just read out some of the responses and comments. And then what I'd like to do is then come back and talk about um, what you feel. And certainly I'm going to put this out to those people that are watching and listening. I think we've got a couple of people watching we'll just at the moment. Through. Yeah. Wonderful. So um, what I will be talking about afterwards is um, what everybody thinks. Now, I'll put this out to the audience and certainly to the individuals within the Mindbrella Committee, including Thumper as well, is um, what kink and fetish can do to aid pride in the pride movement. But before we move on to that, let's just go to the chat room and just have a quick look at some of the comments that have been, uh, that have been popped in there. We have got Mr. Lever UK 2017. Oh, in the chat oh room. Jamie. Yes. yes. Hello, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says the Lever community has historically been discouraged from attending regional Pride. In fact, Lever men didn't start coming to Reading Pride until 2015. Um, and they said they're quite pride proud to have made that happen. As a community, we need to celebrate every facet of our community, whether they are wearing leather, jeans, rubber, or just even a pair of oven gloves. I was first first been at the title outside of London or Manchester, even though it was controversial that I didn't fit the actual mould of a typical Lever man. And then mm -hmm. we've got Jessica, uh, Jessica, also in the chat room as well, who says, so long as fetish people dress appropriately, is what we're saying, mm -hmm. and keep myself covered. I'm a kinkster and believe that bringing kinks, I believe in bringing kinks to the forefront. Love pups, but they must also be dressed to the appropriate tail. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Um, everyone should wear what they want, but be aware of young children, pride is for all. Lovely. That's, that's all we're asking for, really, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. Chrissy, is there anything from the YouTube chat room at all? No, nothing this side. Okay. <laughs> there was me hoping it was a padding there. There we go. Um, I think it actually leads quite nicely on to um, what King and Fetish can do to aid Pride in the Pride movement. I will throw that question out to everybody. And also, at the same time, I'd like to throw that out to uh, the people watching as well. So thank you to... Um, Jessica and also to Jamie, thank you so much for your comments. It's really important that this is uh, very much interactive because um, although we were initially nervous about doing this, um, it's important and we are going to do it and we are doing it. And thank you for being included in that and for sharing your thoughts and feelings towards this because this is the only way that things can move forward and understanding can be uh, can be embraced and people can be educated as far as what the understanding is. So um, with that um, being said, what do we feel? And certainly if you want to go first, Thumper, with uh, your thoughts as far as what can King Confederates do to aid the pr uh, Pride movement and Pride in general, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I think uh, it's multiple, uh, there's multiple things that we uh, King Confederates can do to help the Pride movement. One of them is uh, safe sex practices, my old school safe sex practices. Um, I always say that the level of understanding of consent and understanding of sexual health is very well known within the kink and fetish community. Um, and that is definitely something, and also how to do stuff safely. There's a lot, people are now going access to um, the internet, people search up stuff, people look up stuff and people get interested in stuff. But there isn't any education on how to do stuff that they are watching. And unfortunately, that causes to a lot of problems, that causes to um, a lot of uh, injuries and also can cause death in very rare cases. And without that education, we are uneducating a large proportion of our community and we're putting a large proportion of our community at risk. Um, the other thing that I think King of Edge can do, let's do a bit more cheery, um, uh, is diversity. I think the King of Edge community, especially the Lever community, um, especially recently, has been very inclusive of everyone. And over the history, they've been very inclusive of everyone. Uh, I think it was last year or the year before, they've now uh, released a trans leather flag uh, to oh. show inclusivity of the trans community within the leather community. Uh, we've, there's also been noted occasions of 
inclusion of the BAME community in the 80s, 90s, uh, which obviously of that time we know was a bit, would be iffy, but the leather community was like, yeah, you're included, you wear leather, you're part of our community. And I think that's something that that's the King of Fetish community do so well that we acknowledge that we all like the same stuff, we all do the same stuff. So what's mm -hmm. the difference? We, you're part of our wide community. You, Join us, like have fun, come in. I think there's definitely some work that in certain events and certain places where King of Fetish need to improve in diversity. But I think on gen in general terms, we're better than the general public and the general LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. That's my long speech done. Uh, I think I think you've you've touched on something really interesting there because and I know that um we, we did prepare some questions and I think um I didn't want to kind of throw anything too too kind of challenging in there as far as some of the things that we've spoke about previously. But I know something that we spoke about um essentially my myself to yourself when we did the panel discussion on Thursday, uh which I'm gonna quite happily allude to. And for those of you that are watching at the moment, I think you can replay it back, can't you? Is it yep. it is possible to find that particular panel discussion and um, we'll, we'll go through that and you can link to that at the end of um, today's podcast as well because I think it's really important and really interesting for anyone that is interested in what we're speaking about now that to have a, certainly have a listen to that because it certainly covers off some very interesting points but you've mentioned about inclusivity within the, the King Confessors community and certainly as far as the, the trans community being embraced within the, uh, within the leather community as well. However, when we talk about King and Fetish, it isn't necessarily to do with uh, sexual activity. Uh, is it, that, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, uh, obviously, we've had discussions on this, and that um, it's, it's also alludes a bit to history as well that it isn't all about sexual intercourse. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not about that. But there's a lot of occasions where. I have uh, done stuff with people and there has been no sexual intercourse at all. It is literally just the enjoyment and the intimacy between two people mm -hmm. at a certain point. And as you said, and as we say, there are also asexuals who partake mm -hmm. in kink and fetish. It's that enjoyment between each other. And it's another thing why kink and fetish was so important during HIV and AIDS is because to do kink of fetish, you don't need sexual intercourse. So you weren't passing HIV and AIDS to each other. So people were still enjoying intimate moments with each other without passing the disease, um, which is also an interesting fact. But yeah, kink of fetish is not all about sexual intercourse. It's about the enjoyment and the intimacy between two or more people. Thanks. And um, I will just go back to something you mentioned previously. I know that you did uh, talk about um, almost uh, to, to some degree a safeguarding element and that there isn't a lot of, or if any, education out there is so accessible or certainly not easy to access as far as when uh, individuals see something online that they may wish to partake in or may wish to practice, there isn't actually essentially enough out there to kind of demonstrate to them how to do that safely. And I know you mentioned that in extreme cases, and I, I have to reiterate that you mentioned that it could it could result in a fairly significant harm. Um, but is that that is a rarity? Uh, but it's also important to note that it has to be done safely. Is that correct? Yeah, it's got to be done safely. I think there is education starting to go out there. I will plug someone. Uh, what's the safe word? Is an amazing a YouTube channel and podcast mm. done by an amazing pup in America, which is great. But if you don't know or you haven't spoken to someone that knows about that podcast or you can't really find it, mm. like, where do you go? Where do you go to speak to someone about this? Uh, there's, there's a lot of safety to be involved with this. We, we have um, some acronyms within the um, King community. One of them I... No, is rack risk assess consensual kink there's also prick there's different versions of it but literally is assessing what you're doing mm -hmm. saying is this safe are we and then are we comfortable and we both consented to this and we are only consented to the things that we have consented to beforehand i am not going to change during the scene what i'm doing because that then puts you at risk or puts me at risk so mm -hmm. it literally is that there's so much safety involved. 
I've touched it. Um, now I I do. I am quite dominant sometimes, and I have now learned over time is body language and facial expressions, and also um, safe words. Safe words are the best thing in the world. <laughs> it can be apricot, it can be pineapple, it can be shoe, it can be whatever. But as long as you both know the safe word, and mm-hmm. both know when the safe word is said, you stop. And you look after that person and you go and check upon that person because that is so important. Safe words are important at every every occasion, even just normal uh, sexual intercourse. Understanding a safe word, most of it is no or stop. But on occasions, sometimes it's better to have a word that you're not going to say. I'm not going to say pineapple halfway through a session uh, unless I'm using a pineapple. But... uh, (laughs) but, (laughs) each to their own um but it's, it's try and think of a word that you wouldn't really say during uh sexual intercourse and use that and that's such a great thing that can be used everywhere is understand a safe word and understand what you're consented to before you start and i think you mentioned it also and i will mention it as well because it may not have been something that um those people that are not familiar with uh, kink fetish or the kink fetish community but you also alluded to and you didn't use the word but I will use it which is the word aftercare I believe uh, and it's really important that when uh, and every you said when you're uh, in a session or you're in a scene that once that's completed there there is a, a very important element which is the aftercare element at the end that is also just as important as essentially the session the scene the activity itself. I, I would say probably aftercare is more important than the scene uh, because mm-hmm. the reason I say this is that aftercare is so important for the mental health. We, I think sometimes we, when we talk about sexual health, we talk about the physical problems. I've got an STI, I've got an STD. Uh, but we don't really think about what happens after we've had sex. We have a rush of endorphins. We get so much endorphins going up and then we crash down. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time that we have we have a sexual intercourse or we have a scene or have a session whatever it is you get this rush of endorphins and then people normally just chuck you out the door or they will just leave you or i'll go make i'll go do something else and i'll just leave you which isn't always great for mental health because you're coming off these endorphins which obviously the brain's going a bit weird and you you need that sort of support and that sort of aftercare aftercare can be a hug it can be getting in the shower with your partner and soaping them up and washing them off. I I prefer that one. I will take my partner into the shower and I'll look after my partner in the shower, give them a clean and clean them over. Uh, Other people have cuddly teddies. People have Mm -hmm. other ways of Mm -hmm. having their aftercare and what they like as aftercare. But it's one of the most important things in Mm -hmm. any scene, in any session because it can affect mental health so badly and it's not just like oh it could help affect it for an hour it could be three days people could be on a low for three days after a session because mm-hmm. they haven't had this aftercare i think i think you you've really hit the nail on the head Dan. i think that is actually really important to, to acknowledge that as well and um i don't know if we've got any uh, responses at all in the chat rooms chrissy if i could go to you a second if there be any responses as far as um some of the things that are being spoken about here has anyone got any questions that have been put forward nothing this side nothing that's <laughs> uh, we get all the love on facebook oh yeah amazing. lovely go on hi aaron who's watching um, Charlotte says, Thumper, this is amazing and incredible information and a fantastic podcast and like amazing. Oh, um, and then Aaron's also said, a really interesting podcast. Uh, I'm interested in becoming a pup. I need to click on the bit that says more. Hang on. Um, <laughs> and I really intrigued in how it is incorporated, corporate, co- incorporated, that's it, that's a word, um, into the kink and fetish world around pride and LGBT plus community. Lovely. Well, it, it's it's very clear then from the message we're getting that this was important to do, and I'm absolutely delighted actually that we did it. Although we are all absolutely terrified, but this needs to be said, and the conversation not, not need terrified to be said. about the subject. No, no absolutely, about the not, no, absolutely not. People sometimes respond with. I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I think we're getting some fantastic responses from the chat. I and mean, thank you to everybody that's been so wonderfully inclusive and so 
integral as part of having these conversations and it is really important and um, going back to what we were talking about before then Brazil and talking about the historical connection and we mentioned about sexual health and we mentioned about mental health as well but in particular with kink fetish and sexual health tell us more about the work that um, you do is Animagi uh, and Palm of Pets and the work that you're doing to connect with other charities and establishments and organizations to promote good sexual health and good sexual practices. So um, we, we're currently working with uh, Brian in Gloucestershire. I'm uh, Anna Magin slash me, are part of an inclusive subcommittee from Brian in Gloucestershire, uh, which has really given a great platform for us and for us to reach to our prides. Uh, I, as I said, I was also in the Pride Hub today for Pride in Gloucestershire, and I 100% made sure that I was connected with, with an amazing charity and I want to put uh, I want to promote another uh, group here is the Edderstone Trust. Now the Edderstone what? Trust are an amazing charity <coughs> which are based around the uh, South. I made sure that I was with them, we chatted about sexual health and we learned off each other and we talked about what's going on. We we're also talking about, um, it sounds weird, but what was in the packs? Because obviously they give packs away, which which okay. have uh, um, which have precautions, safety measures, condoms, lube. And I was talking about how actually we can connect to each other. I can talk to events which use lube and condoms, and actually say and see which ones they use and see which ones people prefer. So then they're more likely to pick up packs, which. Mm -hmm. I haven't really thought about, but actually it would be so beneficial if more people pick up the packs because it's got stuff that they like in it, mm -hmm. then it reduces the risk of uh, SDIs passing along. Uh, the other thing is is that um, I am hoping to work with more uh, groups. Uh, one of the amazing groups that is sort of related to the King Fetch community is the uh, Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Uh, there are two groups uh, in the UK. They're, they're pretty much all over the world, but there's two groups in the UK. One's in Bristol and there's one in Manchester. And they're so great for doing pretty much safe practices, condoms, they're giving out condoms at Pride. They're an amazing group of people. Um, and I really want to get those to start to come to Pride as well. They look, they, I will admit this, they do look a bit strange because they look, white they're nuns and you're a bit like oh what's going on here but literally the work that they do is amazing and is definitely a group that definitely should be going to prize more often and that's what we do as animation we look at events we look at people and groups uh which we can collaborate with and try and bring them to pride if we want to bring mr leather to pride we want to bring mr puppy to pride we well, it's Puppy UK now, uh, they did a title change. Um, and we want to bring the sisters along because they're so instrumental and they'll be so beneficial to prides mm -hmm. all around the UK. Um, yeah. I think we have had involvement with them before and they are oh, absolutely yeah. fantastic well. people. They are, they are they're really great. That they, they are serious about what they do, but at the same time, they bring a really nice, very calm and very humorous understanding to something that's really important and I, I i cannot possibly push them as much as you are as well um Thumpen. it is important i don't know if you're in the the facebook chat room but if you want to pop any website links at all that people can kind of click on and, uh, and kind of move themselves towards that would be absolutely lovely um i think uh we've got them there oh i think we've got a question from chrissy yes chrissy more of some information from this side. Obviously, anyone watching that's local to us, you've got safersexbarkshire.nhs.uk, which is our local clinic in the floor, eh? Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Indeed. Um, the, what we'll do is we'll, anything that um, certainly Thumper's alluded to and Chris, we'll try and get that into the Facebook chat room as well so that people can kind of click on those links if, if they'd like to. Um, certainly, I, I think the, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, I think they are on Facebook, aren't they? I believe they're on Facebook. I'm not sure if they're on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I believe they are on, on Facebook. And also, I believe they have got a website somewhere, which I'm, I did find about a few months ago, but I'm still trying, I'm trying to dig up where I found that. But search up the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, mm -hmm. uh, Bristol or Manchester, which are wherever you are in the UK, um, and have a look and you'll be able to find them. 
<laughs> you can't miss them. <laughs> so, no, absolutely. They, they, they come across as uh, like a convent of nuns, don't they? It's been yeah. all these lovely white habits and they, they look beautiful, absolutely stunning, absolutely fantastic. It's, it's a beautiful picture and everything. Um, I don't know if we've got any other pride. questions. Oh, there we are. Best in Superman Pride, we bumped into them when we've been on the road. <laughs> Yes, we did. We very much did. Yes, actually, our, uh, one of the towns, well, the town that we're currently filming at the moment, but we live a little bit further away. I don't know if there's any other questions at all in the chat room at all, Chrissy, before we look to wrap up at all. Yeah. Anything from you? Any comments at all? Just uh, comment for Jessica saying that the sisters have been attending Pride for years and they're fab. Oh, lovely. Brilliant. Um, yeah, that's it. For Excellent. Well, I think this has been absolutely fantastic and fun, but please, please, please allow myself and the Mind Brother team to, to extend your our huge appreciation for you um, actually coming onto our, onto our pokey little podcast and telling everybody about something that, I'll be honest, I don't think a lot of people have actually... Um, how can I put this in a, in a, in a way? Embraced is good. I think really looked into, researched, um, exposed themselves to, probably not the right <laughs> word, um, but you kind of you, you kind of know what I'm getting at because it is important to talk about this stuff. And as my umbrella LGBT+, we are a kinky piece of charity and we're really proud that we are because we want to talk about these things. We want to educate people. We want to point people in the direction that maybe they wouldn't have ever... If, uh, thought about previously so from us at my umbrella thumper thank you so much to yourself uh to anna meiji uh, and to parlor pets as well and feel free to chuck into the facebook chat room any links to your website um facebook twitter any platforms you're on i'm sure that there are people out there that would absolutely love to connect with yourself and also the wonderful work that you're doing out there to actually do something that i don't think we've spent enough time looking into or, or in fact actually educating people on at all so Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. So I, I'm, I'm still trying to work out how to post uh, from my Facebook page. We just made a Facebook page this week, and I'm still trying to work out how to use it. So, but if you don't mind me <laughs> plugging it for a moment, because I can say it better than I can uh, Go find for it. it. Absolutely, please do, please do. So if we are on Facebook recently, and we are on Twitter, it is Anna Meiji. So a N I M A G I C I C. Uh, you can even find us on our website. Just type in Anime G C I C into Google. We're one of the first uh, um, pages to pop up. So click on us. We've got contact details there. If you want to contact me directly, it's thumper underneath uh, at animeg.co.uk. Contact me and I can point you into the right directions. Lovely. Anything from you at all, Chrissy? I keep thinking you're going to something. You just got there with your mic. Um, thank you again, Thumper. We really appreciate that. And thank you um, to everybody that's been involved in today's podcast and for the interaction. I don't think we've actually had any emails come through. I'm just going to very quickly check the mailbox. Nothing's actually popped up. Um, so nothing there at all. So thank you for those of you that have been very kind uh, enough to um to pop some messages in our chat room. And thank you again to Thumper for, from Annie Meiji and also Parlor Pets. So just to wrap up now again, um, don't forget you can find us bi-weekly. Uh, we deliver this amazing podcast to all of you lovely people out there, both on Facebook and also broadcast on YouTube as well. Um, we not only run local social events, but we attend a number of prides across the UK previously, of which we're really hoping to do a few more next year than we've certainly been able to do any whatsoever this year as well. Um, we have also previously facilitated training events with a number of blue chip organisations and global corporates and present to them what they need to know about being LGBT plus and how to be more inclusive within the workplace. We do also work very closely with Shout Out LGBT Radio with our monthly podcast, Under the Brolly. You can also find that on the Shout Out uh, Radio, uh, which I believe is in Bristol. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Marvellous. Uh, and we also have an online Etsy store where you can purchase some absolutely beautiful LGBT plus merchandise, including our guide to LGBT plus. And the details are coming up at the end of the show. There's Thumper there very kindly showing off our mini guides there, some of our beautiful <laughs> mini guides. Um, last year, we supported over 21 prides uh, across the UK. We travelled over 4,000 miles by road and over 1,000 by rail. Um, so if you want to be more included in what we do, then please, please, please do find us on our website, which is www.myumbrella.org.uk. You can also email us, which is info, I-N-F-O, 
at myumbrella.org.uk. And you can also find our wonderful shop, which is www.myumbrella.org.uk forward slash shop. Gosh, that was original. Um, do also get in touch with us if you do want to about any other possible identity, sexuality, kink, fetish, or any other orientation that you may want to know more of. We're quite happy to do the research for you or anything that you'd like us to cover in one of our future shows. Um, do also make sure that you click on the links that um, Thumper has very kindly put into our chat room. Um, and also do please continue to love one another out there and to be inclusive of everybody within the LGBT plus community. Remember, it's it's a bigger community than you think out there, and there's still a lot more to it that is still um, very much not included within a lot of Pride events and certainly within a lot of communities. And it's really important that we do talk about these things uh, and that people understand them more. Well, come in there, Terry. Anything Anything from the rest of the team? No, I don't think so. So without further ado, we will see you all in two weeks' time for another Under the Bloody Live podcast. Until then, we'll see you all very, very soon. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>